Hey, this is Web3 Talks. The rule of this podcast is simple. We only talk with people who have hands-on Web3 building experience. So if you are a hacker, entrepreneur, or investor, you can get inspired by their stories, lessons, and fuck-ups. My name is Mac, and I'm hosting this pod. If you want to stay in touch, go to twitter.com slash webfreetalks, click the link in the pinned tweet, and join our Discord community. Let's go. Our today's guest is Pedro Gomes, co-founder of one of the most omnipresent dApps out there, Wallet Connect. So like, if you've ever used Uniswap or OpenSea, you must have seen Wallet Connect there. I guarantee that. And apart from these two dApps, it's integrated with over 450 other dApps on Web3. And there's like, you know, 170 wallets or even more right now. So it's it's like very, very, very omnipresent dApp. So I'm very happy to have Pedro here because he has a very interesting view like at the industry because, you know, he, he sees everything that's growing there and like all the new apps that are launching. So, you know, first thing first, Pedro, like, how have you ended up in crypto? We always start with this warm-up question. Thanks for having me. I mean, like everyone in crypto that I know got interested in Web3 or Ethereum or blockchain, maybe from their prior experience. And my prior experience was uh, working in fintech. So I was working in a neo bank or a smart bank that catered their experience to the youth, particularly university students. And I was really interested in personal finance. But once you actually work in fintech, you realize how many regulations and traditional finance have kind of just drained the innovation of the whole industry. And then Ethereum kind of just opened that door for me. I looked into how smart contracts work and how Ethereum wallets work. And the whole ecosystem just drove me to kind of build what I wanted to build in fintech into Ethereum. And so then in 2017, I quit my job and I went to Web3. How have you started? Because as far as I understand, Wallet Connect was 2018. So have you done anything between these two events? Yes. So the first project that I joined was called Balance. Balance basically created a portfolio manager, similar to what you see today, Zarian and Zapper. But at the time, there mm-hmm. was literally... Nothing out there that actually provided the interface for you to kind of manage your tokens and your NFTs. And NFTs back in the day were literally just crypto kitties. There wasn't much <laughs> out there. It was really, really early on stuff. There was not Uniswap, very basic stuff. But I think one of the most annoying things that we faced at Balance was the wallet experience because MetaMask had innovated so much by 2017. But there was still so much space for improvement. And we believed that the experience was going to be mobile. I still believe to this day that there's no chance that we onboard the billion users if we don't go mobile. And WallConnect kind of just started with that problem. How do we make the wallet experience mobile? Okay. I know that you started it in 2018. So you wanted to provide this mobile experience for sure. But like, how have you set it up? What's the story? I'll I'll be as detailed as possible. I think that like to start, we need to understand where MetaMask actually came from. Like MetaMask came as a response to this idea that at the time a wallet was built into the full node. So you would need to run an Ethereum full node to get a okay. wallet. Uh, that's how it was designed for Bitcoin. And that's how it was designed for Ethereum. And basically, there was interfaces at the time that kind of allowed you to access your wallet from the full node. And what MetaMask did was basically decouple the two. They separated the full node and the wallet from each other, and they put the wallet where it could actually provide the most value, which was to interface with dApps on the browser. So that's why they made it as a browser extension. However, time has passed and MetaMask has evolved. And by the time I joined, I thought that MetaMask was still not good enough. We were building a balanced portfolio manager at the time, and we had a lot of caveats about how we wanted to improve the user experience, but we were always constrained around the idea of how MetaMask worked. 
MetaMask has improved since then, but at the time there was a lot of things that we wanted to change. So we decided to create the Balance Wallet. But then the problem started with now we have a wallet and now we have a DAB. How do we bring these two together? At the time, I think the only mobile wallets that existed were Cypher Wallet and Trust Wallet. And the way these two approached was basically they built in-app browsers into their wallets. And I just thought this was completely insane because Google, Chrome, Firefox, and Safari have been working for decades on building browsers. I don't want to rebuild that from scratch. Regardless, the technologies have made it easier. It was still a little bit of a wasted effort. So I wanted to still use the existing browsers, but still build our own wallet experience. So at the time, I kind of just was using WhatsApp desktop. And if you've used WhatsApp desktop before, this works with Signal as well. You synchronize your mm-hmm. WhatsApp on your phone to your desktop through a QR code. And then, then I just had the haha moment. And I was like, we should do the same thing with wallets. And then I basically just recreated the WhatsApp mobile to desktop experience for wallets and created the Wallet Connect protocol. And it works really well. Like, you know, I've tried it before and super smooth. It takes, I don't know, like a second maybe or something like that to just integrate. I integrated my ledger with a, with a mobile phone and it was so strange that it worked so so well. It's really seamless. You know, you started in a totally different crypto era. As you say, like, you know, you had basically like crypto kitties. You didn't have Uniswap or like very basic things. So how have you acquired your first users back then? I mean, I think that, you know, the earlier you start, everything is harder, but the market is also smaller. So it's easier to navigate through the crypto market to 2017-18 than it is to navigate to the crypto market now. However, the technology has evolved so much that the, the barrier for entry has been lowered. It's much easier to build technology today. And I think that honestly, what I've tried to leverage as much as possible was this wave of crypto events that was happening. So 2017, 2018 was the previous bull market that we experienced, not this one, the one before. Mm -hmm. And that with that, there always comes a lot of events. So I try to attend as many events as possible, not to just build those relationships, but also to get as much feedback as possible. Because I think that I had a lot of good assumptions about how Wallet Connect should be built. But then... I actually wanted to know if people actually needed this. And just like any other startup, the best thing you can do is lots and lots of user research. Try to really relate with your consumers, which in my case is not end users, is dApps developers and wallet developers. So you are just going around the conferences and you just approach people and say like, hey, I'm building this app, could you test it? Or have you, did you have some more you know, organized way of doing that? That was pretty much it, honestly. So what happened was after I was working at Balance, uh, the whole Wallet Connect project became bigger. And then we saw that this was much bigger than Balance. This was something that should become a public good. So we applied to a Ethereum Foundation grant. And when we actually received it, uh, we were really happy because then this could become its own project. But that also meant that then Pedro left Balance to go solo and just like go into the world and try to build this. So that was kind of scary. But honestly, it was the best thing that could have happened because then WallConnect essentially built this neutral brand. It was extremely open and available to everyone and was no longer owned by any single wallet. So I mm-hmm. think that also helps kind of approach people because people had a very different perspective of, you know, if you're a dApp, you don't want to hear from another dApp developer, you know, sure, there's collaboration in the space, but at the end of the day, everyone will compete for the best application. And having the Wallet Connect build this infrastructure that's so neutral to every dApp and wallet made the conversations much easier because then I could hear from every single dApp developer and every single wallet developer. And I actually learned a much broader scope than as you would because the competition wouldn't necessarily express as much information directly. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, I think that was an amazing uh, perspective to have, and I learned a lot from it. 
Okay. I know that you are very like heavily focused on UX, that it, it's super important. I, I've seen your Twitter threads about it. You can also feel it in the product almost everywhere. And as far as I understand, you share this like Steve Jobs idea that you start with customer experience and work backwards to the technology. So I'm wondering, like, how do you do it in practice when it comes to product design? Do you have any process, any, you know, some checklist that you follow? This is a great question. And I think I can answer it much better now. So one of the things that changed since 2018 is that Right now, in 2022, I grew a company of 25 people, and I had to explain this process because it's no longer Pedro doing the work. It's the Wall Connect team has to achieve the same principles that made Wall Connect successful. And what we have been doing so far was, number one, we first find the demand for something. This normally comes with engaging with projects like dApps and wallets, and they tell us that we wish this existed, right? That's kind of the first thing. And you kind of get the sentiment of there is a large portion of consumers that actually want this. So this is how we've been developing our new APIs and everything. But then then you actually have to execute. So you, you've gotten the concept. It was driven by actual user demand, but then you actually have to design what they actually want. First thing you do is, meet the requirements. You write perhaps like the three to five most important things that it should achieve. And then from there, you should literally write down. And when I say write down, we're not talking about code. We're talking about actual English or natural language where you literally write down every single step that the user needs to take. Before you even design or develop or code anything, you need to understand at every step of the way what is going to be done by the user to achieve something. And we literally start specking out this. And I'm really proud that Wallet Connect is open source. So you can actually observe this process in our GitHub repository. In our Wallet Connect documentation, we write our specifications for each API. And we always start with the goals, which are the requirements of a protocol, then the user experience, and then after the user experience, we actually develop the technical specification that fulfills the user experience. So we pretty much, once we agree on the user experience, we don't touch it. And it's now our jobs as engineers to try to work it backwards rather than the usual way of software development where you build a technology to fulfill a problem and then the user experience kind of has to mold around it. Makes sense. And, uh, you know, when you write it down, do you write it down, you know, in some Google Docs or you do it like it's some flowchart in Figma or some like other kind of tool? We, given that we are a very engineering first company, we have used markdown files on GitHub as the primary tool. I mean, we have explored in the past like Google Docs and even Notion, but we just really like the ability to kind of update documents with GitHub and contribute in a way that is more democratic that GitHub provides that the other collaborative tools didn't really fulfill. And then after writing down the actual user experience, then we actually try to build the flowcharts. Uh, mm -hmm. The first user experience that you write should almost tell just the story, like the story of the user. The user wants to do this. And then the user goes to this application. Mm -hmm. It takes these steps by clicking these buttons. And in, we try to basically achieve the goals within two or three buttons because by the fourth button, the user is already sleeping. So it really needs to feel like magical as if what happened, how did we achieve this? And then that's, mm -hmm. that's where technology really needs to step in. How can you achieve this in two or three steps? Yeah, makes sense. So, you know, talking about engineering, like I know that you've been working hard on the, on the next version of Wallet Connect. And there are some really, really cool features like, you know, idea of sending transactions to different chains without having to change chains. And, you know, the idea that you doesn't need to connect with a dApp in every session so like your wallet stands just like as if you just logged in in a normal web to service. And, you know, all these things 
sound very cool from the UX perspective, but I guess they must have been very challenging from the technological perspective. Because it's typically like, if something's very <laughs> clean and neat when it comes to UX, it means it's very hard to do when it comes to tech. Like, it's a <laughs> rule of a thumb, I guess. So I'm wondering, like, how have you implemented these features? What have been the most challenging? I think the biggest challenge has always been trying to balance security, privacy, and convenience. Because I always believed that what Wallet Connect really offered was, we are not going to give you the most secure wallet. This is not a hardware wallet per se. Like it's not our job to build a vault for your private keys. But this is also not uh, something you're going to lose easily. We're trying to find the balance between convenience and security. And I think that's the biggest challenge, which is, We have to find the correct cryptographic agreements between two completely unknown applications to then just magically agree. And you as a user don't even need to understand how and why they did things the way they did. Everything happens in the background, but we're trying to ensure that we follow users' best practices. For example... One of the things that's really important is that we always have user consent. All of the protocols that Wallet Connect build are based on the idea that we build permissionless protocols where any wallet can connect to any application given that the user has given consent. So we can provide as many tools as possible and best practices for users to behave safely on Web3 but it's always up to user consent. And this basically builds on top of let's do cryptography in order to protect the user. So we basically just use normal cryptographic agreements and encryption and authentication to essentially encode this into the session. So the new features that we build in terms of like decoupling, pairing from sessions, where you scan the QR code once and you can have sessions with multiple applications, multiple chains, These all follow these principles in terms of uh, design. And it was really a matter of trying to optimize for the seamless experience where the user was always secure, right? So we want the convenience without compromising security, but we also don't want to optimize for security so much that's inconvenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if you want to onboard so many new users. Because, you know, you said about onboarding this billion users and that we need a mobile experience. Do you think it's mostly because, you know, in Southeast Asia, in India, in Africa, many people are just mobile first? In the West, it might be surprising because we are more PC or laptop centric. But like so many people there, they use mobile phones. And I even remember... When I was doing an interview with one of the Indian founders, he told me that they added a feature that you can code in their app using mobile phone. And I was like, who would code using phone? Like, I would never do it. Yeah. But, you know, as they were targeting Indian market, he said that, like, you know, many people used it. So I'm wondering, like, what was this the main reason why you were focused on mobile experience or did you have any other rationale behind it well i i wouldn't necessarily say i do agree like if you go into the eastern markets you definitely see a much bigger popularity on mobile because by the time the internet proliferated through those markets mobile phones were already pretty much advanced while us had early access to the internet therefore desktops were the only options that they had but i think the reason i always cared about mobile so much was Because I started realizing that there's only a couple power users or technologists who actually use desktops, right? Laptops are technologist power user thing. And even for the mainstream, if they do own desktops, they're either studying in university or even in high school, or they use it purely for work. The actual big bulk of time they actually spend with a screen is done through mobile. So how are we going to have a much better personal finance experience where people take control and ownership over their identity, their Mm -hmm. finances, and everything else if we put it in their work machine, which they 
definitely do not want to spend more time on. Yeah, like, you know, now I think that most of entertainment, apart from like Netflix and all these streaming services, I have on on my phone, like, you know, Instagram, like, you know, Messenger, WhatsApp. I use it on my phone, on desktop, like sometimes, but but not that often. So it makes perfect sense. Like if you want to, you know, have like, I don't know, web-free social experience, just like, you know, you integrated with Instagram, like, you know, a few weeks ago. Like most people use Instagram on mobile phones because it's mobile first app and you need to make pictures to yeah. <laughs> use it. So, you know, talking about the Instagram, you know, it's one of many, many integrations that you had, but like, how do you do it so efficiently? Like, how have you made it so omnipresent? Like, do you have a business development team that just, you know, contacts the bigger projects or like, how does it work? Well, we basically built out our business development team in the last three months. And the Instagram integration actually happened uh, while it went public now. It's been in the mm-hmm. works for like almost a year. And mm-hmm. I honestly cannot take credit for it. I think that number one, Wallet Connect has definitely gained a large predominance in the market where it was naturally given the status of if you are going to build a what a DAP, you're going to use Wallet Connect. But also we have seen wallets like big wallets like MetaMask, Rainbow, Trust, and Token. These wallets have also gone out and reach out to applications to integrate Wallet Connect. I think the biggest advantage of Wallet Connect has always been its neutrality. Because it's a neutral platform, everyone can build their networks on top of it. Mm -hmm. You won't see MetaMask pitching MetaMask. You won't see Rainbow pitching Rainbow to these applications. They will pitch Integrate Wallet Connect so you can be compatible with me. So building that platform was way more important. So I didn't have to build a business development team early on because what I created was this organic growth. And this is why a lot of the times I said, I can't take credit for all the success of Wallet Connect because this is really a community effort. Mm -hmm. And how do you take care of the community? Because as you said, like you are very deeply embedded in the web free community. So I'm wondering, like, how do you take care of these relationships? Do you make some events, have a Discord channel, go to beer or like whatever? What's your method? I think that right now we do tons of events and I'm really grateful of how big Wallet Connect has grown as an organization. But in the past, like Wallet Connect was, I just had to take care of it as something sacred in a sense. Because I think that when you have something so early on, a lot of people see the potential, but then they always have a very biased perspective and they try to kind of lean the direction towards something that they particularly focus. So what I tried to do was listen to as many projects as possible and try to find what was the common denominator that they all really cared about without being particularly biased towards any project. And that was a, that was extremely important because then you didn't see any wallet or application take over and skew the direction to kind of favor a particular direction. And that's why I keep repeating that Wallet Connect neutrality does not come just as a brand, but as a technology. It has to horizontally scale in a way that is useful for the majority rather than just usable for Mm -hmm. a couple of people. So that was my job. I I don't see myself so much as a businessman in the beginning, but almost as an ambassador to the protocol where I try to find diplomacy between these competing parties to build something together. And how does it look now? Because, you know, that's how it started. You are this kind of like a like a judge trying to find, you know, the common ground. So wondering, like, how does it look like now? Uh, You said that you have some events, but like, you know, let's say that you have different dApps that have some feature requests or want to share Mm -hmm. their ideas. So how how do you gather this uh, this input from there? This is interesting. I mean, Wallet Connect version two is both a technological development, but it's also an organizational development. The things that have changed in the last two years was 
that Wallaknake became more as a venture rather than a community effort. We're still fully open source, but we run more like a corporation than we did before. And this does bring some advantages. When it was purely a community effort, one of the disadvantages was coordination. Building features and developing code was extremely slow, and it was very noticeable, especially for the Android and iOS SDKs that took not only a long time, but didn't reach the same level of quality as before. Right now, we have dedicated teams in-house for iOS, Android, web, and even for Unity now that actually develop these SDKs for with much faster timelines, but also with much higher quality because we have a much shorter feedback loop and they also cross communicate. So when feature is developed on iOS, it's developed for Android and JavaScript. But how do we actually take care of deciding the direction of these features? Well, that comes through a lot of lot of conversations. Just like in the beginning, as it is now, I try to engage with as many dApps and wallets as possible to get their feedback and then just digest what is the sentiment as a whole. Like, where is the Ethereum community moving forward and what do they need to take the next steps? So that's why with Wallet Connect V2, we started expanding our scope beyond connecting your wallets and transactions. And we recently announced Wallet Connect Chat, and we're also working in Wallet Connect Off and Push. Could you tell about these new features that you're working on? Because they are very, very exciting things that you have, uh, you know, under development. Yeah. So Wallet Connect Sign, what we used to call just Wallet Connect, we now call Wallet Connect Side. It's our golden child that kind of started this whole initiative. You connect your wallet remotely from your mobile phone, and you can sign transactions. And now you can do it in a way that it's multi-chain and has an improved experience where you have one pairing multi-session. But then we actually expanded the infrastructure to support more APIs. What does this mean? The infrastructure is essentially a messaging network. Uh, In order for you to remotely connect an application and wallet, you need to have a way to transport these messages in any, any application and platform. So Wallet Connect is compatible everywhere. That means that it's iOS, Android, mobile, desktop, web, servers, it doesn't matter. So the messaging network can be then leveraged because we have almost 200 wallets connected to it. We can send different messages and these messages can serve different use cases. The first use case that we created was the Wallet Connect chat, allowing two users in the Wallet Connect network to message. This could be a rainbow user talking to another rainbow user, or it could be a MetaMask user talking to I'm token user. This will essentially build the true shared like chatting application that we always wanted. With Wallet Connect Off, this comes as a response to these big integrations like Instagram and Twitter that build NFT profile verification. And the way they did this was essentially by doing message verification. In the meantime, as they develop these features, a new standard has come along, which is called Sign In with Ethereum. So we created a dedicated API for this particular use case. And lastly, we have Wallet Connect push notifications. I think this is probably the most promising API of all of them, which builds on top of the existing Wallet Connect sign and off. And applications can offer the ability to push notifications outside of the session. So if the user is offline, they can keep track of important events regarding the applications directly into their wallet. You said that you transformed into into a venture. So I'm wondering, how do you make money as a company? Or do you make any (laughs) right now? I believe that Wallet Connect has a much longer road to go. So I consider Wallet Connect to still be in its growth stage. Not just because it's only a one-year-old company, but because the scale that we have achieved is still not significant for us to have a revenue stream. But most importantly, one of the biggest differences that happened was when I initially developed Wallet Connect was to be self-hosted. By self-hosted, I mean that every application and wallet will run a service on their own infrastructure to offer their users the ability to route messages between each other. However, After four years in production, we saw perhaps 
a couple, five maybe applications that actually run self-hosted. And then I had my servers, my personal servers at the time, running the whole Ethereum ecosystem, routing messages. And then I just realized this is a huge problem, but it's also a massive business opportunity. So that's where Wallet Connect Cloud came. Wallet Connect Cloud essentially offers cloud hosting for the open source protocol. Obviously, it's still able to self-host, but the majority of the applications at Wallet have chosen to use Wallet Connect Cloud. Oh, didn't know about it. I'm wondering, you know, if you had to name the biggest challenge of running Wallet Connect, what would it be? What, what was the hardest thing that you had to overcome? I think that I always wish that wallets would push the boundaries of what the interfaces could be more. So... First of all, we, we had a lot of fragmentation in regards to signing messages. Uh, there used to be a standard called if sign, and then they created a personal sign. And then this created a huge commotion because then some wallets signed in a particular different way. And it, it's a little bit unsolved. I still want people to kind of converge into a single message signing method. That would be my first request. And the second one was to wallets to actually have more advanced features. For example, if encrypt and if decrypt were, if they were widely adopted, we could have built so many better privacy preserving applications. And so far we have seen no adoption other than MetaMask. And even MetaMask has plans actually to deprecate this method, given that there is plans to change it. So if we had better coordination over these APIs, uh, we could do so much more with Web3. So if I had the magic wand, I would have every wallet using the latest APIs for signing messages, transactions, encrypting, decrypting, adding DID support so we could have digital identity built into the wallets. There's so much space to improvement. And I think Wallet Connect in the future will be able to play a role in that. Mm -hmm. What wallet do you personally use? Do you have anyone that's your, you know... <laughs> The one that you prefer. As a Wallet Connect uh, co-founder, I'm not really in a <laughs> position to particularly discuss this topic. I have okay. more than 20, 20 oh. wallets installed, and I have to say that I personally used all of them. Obviously, with time, I have tended to use some more than others, but I, I wouldn't want <laughs> to pick any winner. Okay, okay. Okay, so... I have a few questions that we always ask. So the first one is, what has been the most mind-blowing web free projects that you have seen? Because you've seen uh, many of them in the last years. I mean, that's interesting. I think that I wouldn't particularly put a name on the web three project and I would put it on a category. For example, cross-chain has been really in my mind because while we've been moving into a multi-chain world, Cross-chain is really going to unlock everything. And in that particular area, we've seen Connects Network and Hot Protocol doing really well. I think mm -hmm. that these uh, rollups like Arbitrum and Optimism and even CK rollups like Polygon, CKVM and CK Sync, they're building the, their dedicated bridges, but the user experience, as always, has to be prioritized. And Connects Network and Hot Protocol essentially build fast bridges, basically skipping the long waits that you need to do with the official bridges. And I think that's going to be really important. And I hope that in the future, we could even see a world where this functionality is built into the wallets. You would go to an application, the application, let's say, requires you to connect to chain B, but all of your assets and funds are on chain A. You could seamlessly call a transaction to bridge the assets before calling a smart contract. And I think mm -hmm. that's really going to unlock the full potential of Web3 when cross-chain like Connects Network and Hop Protocol mm -hmm. really become even bigger than they are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Hop Protocol. Use it a lot. Uh, even had Chris Winfrey here uh, a few episodes ago. So it's a, it's, it's very, very interesting project. You know, like if it got integrated into wall, it would be like super smooth. And, you know, uh, for me as a, like, 
I'm, I don't know, intermediately advanced user. Like I'm not like super advanced, but, but I understand like most of the things are what are going on under the hood. So like this changing the networks is pretty tiresome. So like, you know, if my mom was supposed to use it, I don't think she could handle that. Yeah. Actually, I should have used my magic wand for that one. But <laughs> I, I'm a little bit more hopeful that we're going to fix this problem because in the past, we had the problem of not having standardization across wallets. So when MetaMask and Wallet Connect existed in the beginning, they were completely you know, not interoperable. So an application had to create an integration dedicated for MetaMask and one for Wallet Connect. And it was extremely cumbersome because then you're putting more developer hours just to integrate one wallet after the other. And with the, the existence of MetaMask and Wallet Connect in, in parallel, we ended up coming with a standard called the EIP-1193 provider interface. So the provider interface allowed us to treat every wallet as the same interface. So MetaMask and Wallet Connect could be integrated in the same manner. However, one of the consequences of that particular interface was that we created it in a single chain manner. So we created this network switching by mistake because in the past, the only network switching that you would have done would have been between mainnet and a testnet. So we didn't think that it was quite a priority at the time. Uh, we're talking about something that's almost three or four years old, which is ages in Web3 mm -hmm. world. So I think that what we need to do is basically create a multi-chain version of that same interface for wallets, and it's going to completely eradicate the network switching. We've designed Wallet Connect V2 already prepared to address that interface even before it becomes a standard. Sounds interesting. You know, for, I got one more question, like a more loose one. <laughs> So, like, what has been the funnest thing that happened to you for all these years? Something that made you laugh, smile, something very positive? I don't know. I think what I always look back and I find fascinating is that I have the privilege of being so early into Web3. And we would always go to these conferences and we would basically just rant with each other for technical uh, problems and potential of the technology and everything. But then at the end of the day, we'd all like just grab a beer and just be casual people just hanging out. And I think the, one of the most beautiful experiences is that Ethereum is really like almost like a group of family and friends building a technology. And I, I really cherish that the most. It's a memory that I, I will carry with me because we will see this technology become predominant in everyone's lives. And it was just a bunch of friends together going into conferences who kind of just had a great time together and really wanted to build something good for the world. Yeah, that's a really positive note. So, you know, I have just uh, two more questions. Like the first one, it's like where, where people can learn more about Wallet Connect. Should they go to Twitter, website, Discord, Telegram, or, you know, anywhere else? Well... Always go to walletconnect.com because at least you will have a much clearer picture of what we're really offering. If you're a developer, register for Wallet Connect Cloud. Always follow Wallet Connect on Twitter at Wallet Connect for our latest announcements. And at Discord, you can get your questions answered directly with our developer advocates so you can troubleshoot if you have any issues with the documentation. Okay, so Pedro, it was a very, very nice conversation. Thank you for sharing so much about, you know, the the backstage of Wallet Connect. So I'm wondering, do you have any ideas for guests uh, that might be a good fit for the conversation that we had? Some other builders that you think, you know, that already built something valuable and would be ready to share their experiences? Well, I think one of the topics that I really care about is about account abstraction. So account abstraction means that the Ethereum protocol would essentially make private key management significantly easier. I think this will be such a big change for the user experience that will be even more meaningful for the average user than even the merge. And you could even invite someone from the actual EIPs, like the EIP 3074, like Sam Wilson, Matt Garnett. They would be good candidates. Or even someone who has been thinking about account abstraction, like the Argent team, 
I know that Julian has a lot of opinions on it and he would be a great guest. So something that would really showcase the future of wallets is even more brighter, not just because Wallet Connect is growing, but because the Ethereum as a protocol is evolving to be even easier for the average user. Oh, thanks. That's a very, very good job because, you know, this private key management for like, even for me, it's somehow it's sometimes hard because I now have like many wallets and like many, you know, private keys stored in different places. So yeah, Argent is definitely on my list. So I might reach out to them. Thanks a lot for this idea. And account abstraction is going to solve all the problems. Uh, I'm extremely <laughs> biased because I, I, I've been building wallet software for a long time, but I truly believe it's going to change how we use Ethereum forever. Yeah. So like people from the audience, if you want to read about on account abstraction, Pedro had a nice Twitter thread some time ago. So if you go to his Twitter account, then you can, you can read it for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So Pedro, thanks a lot. It was a pleasure to, to see you and, you know, hopefully see you on some conference and we can grab a viewer just like in, you had in the good old times. <laughs> As always, I'm always good for another beer. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.